and I'm your Art Sherpa. I don't want to take you through a really quick sunset sky. This is about a two hoot difficulty, but we're going to do it real fast and get it up. Just as a fast tutorial, because I know a lot of you out there are excited about skies. It's kind of why you maybe even wanted to paint, but they're a little intimidating. But I want to let you in on a secret. Skies are easy. They really are. They're just almost an abstract. They're just color and light and dark relating to each other in a way that says it's a cloud or it's a sky. Hmm, that didn't sound particularly easy, but it is. So I'm gonna show you how to do this from the brushes up. I'm gonna paint a thing, you're gonna paint a thing. I'm gonna paint a thing, you're gonna paint a thing. And then together we're gonna end up with the same painting. So let's paint this fabulous sunset sky right here. Just the sky part, we're not gonna do the rest of it underneath here. And that should give you a good idea of how that's actually done. I'm gonna put my palette out. I'm gonna put some crimson out, some napthol crimson. Put some phthalo blue. Ooh, that's exciting. On the other side here, because sometimes phthalo and, and dioxine purple can look a little bit similar. There's the dioxine. I'll put a little more there because I know I'm going to need a lot today. Some a little bit of raw sienna. Cad yellow. A little more cad yellow, I think. <coughs> and a little cad red medium. And then white. That's a fun palette, right? Believe it or not, these two reds, they're actually really important to have both of them. And I'm going to put out a lot of white. There we go. I've got my water, and I've got my brush, and I've got my paper towels. So, okay, I want to get this in really quickly. I don't want to take a lot of time doing it. The first upper part of this, believe it or not, is a little bit of purple, a little bit of blue, you can do it, just mixing them together. Now, you'll notice I don't just mix my paint plops together. Right? I'm gonna paint the first upper part of this canvas with this nice mix of color. I'm going to take this. All right. And we're just working on the sky today. Just the idea of the sky. The reason there's texture on my canvas is sometimes because I paint so much and I'm not going to keep every single thing that I paint. I'll gesso over it, which is a really good tip for you if you're getting into painting. Gesso is a great way to repurpose canvases and get to use them again. You can get it. It's really inexpensive. They've got it at all the art supply shops, including our favorite, Michael's or Walmart or Jerry's, Aaron's. Any of them will have it. Gesso. And they even now have a student grade gesso. So it's a little less expensive. Now the next thing that I'll do, I'll rinse this out a little bit. It's a little harder to rinse out big brushes because they carry so much water, so you'll really need to have a paper towel handy to keep that from getting overwhelming. I'm going to take a little of this brown and mix it with the blue. Wipe it on my paper towel and just get my white. Right under here, I'm going to finish my sky in that color. I'll just keep adding white. Just keep lightening it up. One trick, while the paint is still wet, I'm going to pull my big brush through it, pulling the colors and softening them together. Keep pulling that down. Try 
Uh, let's get that done. Oh, there's my daughter. She's always got a lot to say. Hi! <laughs> oh, you may or may not be able to hear her. Don't worry, she's being supervised. All right, so we've got the sky in. I'm gonna run my brush through and kind of pull everything level. Trick to this will be to be moving along quickly enough to make sure that you're painting wet into wet paint. When you paint wet into wet paint on acrylic, you get a very similar effect that you see in oil paintings. So if you let this dry out and you go back over it with the wet paint, then it's not gonna do that soft blend that you may be looking for and you might have to start it back over again. All right, I'm gonna rinse off my big brush. Paper towel out the excessive water. And my magic, magic trick, the hair dryer. <laughs> Okay, I'm gonna grab my round, I think this is like a 16, the numbers have been <laughs> rubbed off on it, but my large round old beat up brush and it's gonna help me get in the rest of my background sky. I'm gonna mix a little of my blue and my brown together, add a little of the purple to it, grab a little bit of the white and I'm gonna come here and directionality right here is gonna matter. I'm gonna be going from a left, right, upward diagonal directionality with this. And I'm gonna just softly put in a little of this back cloud bank, right? I'm gonna put a little bit of this in. Get a little of that color in there. I've got a very soft brush pressure and that soft brush pressure really allows me to get in here I'm gonna mix a little brown and purple. Get a little white to that. I'm gonna come right back in here. Mix a little brown and purple. This type of sky is really about these kinds of subtle little changes that are gonna go on. All right, so I'm gonna got that, and then I'm gonna come in. I'm gonna grab some just purple, interestingly enough, and add a little red to it. All right, and I'm gonna come underneath here. I'm gonna start layering that in. Just layering that in. This sort of is coming in, this is a band. Grab some more of that, some purple and the red. Come on in, band it up, bands. Just get the bands. Have fun. Keeping this brush directionality going, I'm gonna come along here. Now I'm leaving this upper part absolutely the deep purple and I'm just bringing this up here where this cloud bank is going see that coming across here how's that looking to you guys back there all right and I'm gonna build this in I won't use that much water on this painting between segments because I want a fairly dried out brush and I want a little bit of the pigment that I've got going on this brush. And come up here.
We're gonna fill all that in. See, that's just starting to make a little difference there. Grab a little of this, grab a little of that. Now I got a little hotter on the red and I'm coming back in through here. Go a little hotter on the red. It's a little bit hotter on the red right there. Pulling in a little more red to that purple. You should grab a little more red. This is good for you to do if you've done a few little skies and you're ready to sort of just give yourself a little bit of a challenge, right? I'm going to wipe this off on the paper towel, grab some just purple, and I'm going to come right through the middle of here with this just intense purple. And come right up here with some more of it. Well, just intense purple. Start building up those clouds. Build them up, build them up, build them up. Okay. So, see this here? It's very dark, but it's starting to get some value differences. It's starting to get some some deep darks. We're all in the eights, nines, and tens. When we're talking about that, we're talking about the gray scale. Ten shades of gray, not 50, just 10. Uh, really only Argus see 50 because you have to take the Pantone test to see all of them. I can see them. Most people see about 20. <laughs> but we use a gray scale that's 10. So if someone says to you, you're in an art class, and they say that we're in eight, and nine, then you know that you're in a very dark shade, closer to black. Or if they say we're using one or two, you know that you're closer to the lightest value or shade. All right. Now what's fun here is we're going to be using some of Pantone's color of the year, Radiant Orchid. Um, every year the Pantone group in this committee gets together and they decide the colors for really basically the whole world. So if you're wondering why all of a sudden you see this Radiant Orchid everywhere, that's where it came from. Hemlock and Freesia are also popular colors this year that they've decided. I think that's kind of funny and entertaining. Now I'm going to take a little bit of this white and I'm going to come over to this mixture. I'm going to add a little white into it. All right. Ah, and I've got this more red and I'm going to come up along here and I'm going to dust some of this here some places. I want it a little darker though. All right, there, I've got it. We're gonna pull this in. Just dust some of this fabulous color up in here. Just dust some of this fabulous color up in here. It's sort of fun to do. Let's pull some of it down here. Oh yeah, that's lovely. Keeping that directionality, that left, right, upward directionality. We can do it, don't you worry about it. We're going to be done with this actually quicker than you think. Just sort of interesting how quickly these actually go. Now I'm going to mix um, a much pinker. I'm going to come in with a little lighter color here, a little more purple. I'm going to come in and kind of dust in some of this. Little shorter brush strokes, they're sort of little up and downy brush strokes. Come in. We're just putting in a little bit of a highlight here. And come in with that, yeah. A little bit here. There we go. I've got some nice stuff happening there. Wipe this off on the paper towel. Wipe off the extra paint. This one I might actually kind of give it a rinse. Use my paper towel for the excess water. All right. Now I'm going to get a little more into my crimson. My crimson is a very different color. I'm going to add some white to that. We're going to come in here and add some tones there. I got a little bit of the 
things here. Believe it or not, you can come in and you can get some of this yellow and you get a very interesting effect when you come in with this. Just having fun. I'm going to let that brush rest a minute and I'm going to grab my inexpensive half inch brush because it just gives me a little bit more control and I like this one because it's a little bit fluffy. If you can find a brush that's been a little bit damaged or is a little bit fluffy, it's very helpful in doing this sort of cloud effect. So I'm going to come in here and I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to mix some more of the orange color that I want to see in my sky. I'll gray it with purple a little bit. And that's an interesting thing. You don't really think that that's what you're doing, but that is what you're doing. And I'm going to put in little dusts of this here and there. Little dusts falling along these of this orange. We're going to come up here. And you will have developed these shapes. These are your cloud shapes. And as you go, You'll want to follow those. We're going to put a little run of this along here. Just a little run of this. We've added a little white and a little more red to that uh, orange. Follow along this. Pretty easy to do. Just dust that in there. sure we've got enough of this up here. Just keeping my pressure very, very light. I'm just keeping it super light. Okay, so now what I'd like to do is start adding some of the drama and light and dynamic energy to my sky and how I'm going to do that is I'm going to get into my reds and my oranges and my bright intense colors. So the first thing that I'll do is I'm going to get, I'm going to add just a titch of yellow, just a titch to my crimson. So we want to do all kinds of shades. We're going to come along here. I'm going to pick just a little line and I'm going to up and create this highlight along this little cloud bank here. Yeah. Create this little highlight on this little cloud bank here. I'm taking it up the canvas. Take this up. All right. So you see that? Do you see that? Let's come along the top here. I've lightened this up a little bit. I'm trying to give this some dimension. Come up a little bit. I need to put a little bit up here. Just doing some drama, some drama, drama, right 
there. He's putting in some drama. It's fun to put in some drama. Drama, 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 drama. Drama, 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 drama. Oh yeah, let's do some drama along here. Some drama going right there. Peeking out. Nice peeking out drama. Wonderful peeking out drama. Uh-oh. Wonderful peeking out drama. Are you seeing that there? Are you feeling the energy of that ray? Is that starting to be kind of fun and exciting? I want you to really just enjoy this process. Instead of seeing it as a challenge to overcome, see it as an opportunity to discover how amazing that you are and that you can do things that are challenging. That the tools that you need to accomplish your goal are just there. And all you gotta do is make the effort to access them. Every time you go to paint a sky, it's gonna get easier. That's just what's gonna happen. No matter where you're at today, tomorrow will be better. And the next day will be better, and the next day will be better. There's never any growth in art. It just never stops. That's what makes it such an exciting thing to have in your life. You know, let's come along here and create a nice strong highlight here. Oh yeah, I like that. Coming along here, this nice strong highlight. Making these dramatic skies is a lot of fun. Gonna maybe add some dramatic sky right here in the middle. Drama, drama, drama to the sky, sky, sky. back there. See, I'm just finding these random little spots. I'm just looking for places for the red to sort of run into. And I'll scrumble that down into there. Scrumbling, highly technical fun art term that's actually real. It uses me to no end. All right. I'm gonna get a little of my yellow and it's got some red on it, but I'm not, I want a little bit in there and I'm gonna grab some white. I really want it to be very quite light. There we go. And I'm going to come along and I'm going to create some like highlighting in some of this space. Right up along here I'm going to create some little highlighting. A little highlighting coming up. I think I want even more white on that. There we go, a little more area. Coming up here. Just run a little bit along here. Directionality matters. Pay attention to that directionality. That left to right going up. Nice dramatic sky. Maybe a little more pink in this color. Added just a little more pink. Sometimes your palette wanders away on you. It's a thing that actually happens to people. It certainly happens to me. Now along here, I'm going to run this brighter color along the edge of my cloud line. It's really sort of fun for me to do. We're just sort of working on this detail of this sky here. Not really worrying about this whole space. We haven't put our little mountain in or anything. Because this is just a little tutorial. Oh, I picked up some blue. When that happens to you, don't stress on it. Just rinse it out. Wipe it off. Get your color again. And just get going. There are there's just nothing that's really gonna throw you off your game here as long as you just stay calm and 
know that if you paint, all that's going to happen is a painting. That's all that's going to happen. That's all we're going to get out of this is a painting. Put a little highlight there. Make the sky very dramatic. Maybe a little bit right here. Oh, okay. Now what we can do if we really like this. I'm going to throw in a little mountain range here so I can show you the light effect between the mountain range and the sky. And that's really sort of a fun thing to do. I'll make this line here along my cloud bank, the top of my little mountain range. And then come here, I'm going to just go down. Come down. I don't want to dip that much. And I'll have that little bit of blue sky. And we'll grab a slightly bigger brush and just kind of get that in. A little mix of purple and blue again. Just paint that in for the purposes of knowing where it is. Sometimes it's good just to know where your horizon line is. You'll hear artists talking about this all the time, the horizon line. Basically all they're talking about is where the sky meets the land. That's really what we're referencing is where objects disappear from our eye line, <laughs> where they merge, where they converge. It's just about where, where the objects on the ground meet the objects in the air. Even if it's inside a building, it's still about the ceiling and the floor. So we'll just run this little mountain line here, get this little sucker in real fast. Got some more purple. And it's real fun to put these little sunsets in. You know, this kind of sky can feel really intimidating, but it's really just a joy. A lot of things like that are in life, you know, that they can be intimidating. But you can't let yourself get intimidated in the studio. You've got to really just open your breath up, open your heart up, have a little bit of faith, faith in yourself, faith in well-being. There's just not enough faith in well-being. There's not enough faith in things are fine. Things are okay. And that doesn't mean they're always easy. Things are not always easy. You know, things are, things are not always perfect. You know, but when you have art, when you're creative, being creative is a lot like being rich because anything you can imagine can be yours. When you talk to somebody who's truly artistic or truly crafty and they believe in that side of themselves, if they want something that would be normally out of their, their reach cost-wise, they just go figure out how to make it. And anyways, anymore, you can go on YouTube or the internet or Pinterest and find out how to make something, right? You wanted a gorgeous big sunset sky. You know, it's lovely to have the money to, to go buy one from an artist that you love and enjoy, and I certainly want you guys to collect artwork, I do. But it's even more lovely to know that it's in you to do it. It's in you to have it. And if you are blessed enough to be able to go to places like Hawaii, how amazing is it going to be to be able to just ooh, take your little palette out to the beach? All right, take your little palette out right out to the beach and uh, paint. How awesome is that going to be? You're going to be like, I can handle that sky. I know that's in me. I have faith in myself. I've got my tools. Sure, my cabana boy is looking at me like I've lost my mind and is concerned about the paint mess, but I'm going to paint anyways. 
take your paints on a cruise. I've done it. You know, you can paint right there on the cruise. You can do this right there on a the cruise. You can do this in your backyard. Maybe, maybe that's the vacation, is just having a quiet minute in your backyard. You can paint right there. You build up this language and you've got the whole world. Look at that nice little mountain set we just threw in there like that was nothing. It's just in there. That's no big deal. We're just throwing mountains. We don't, we don't get intimidated. We just throw them in. All right, so I've got my little half inch brush here. I'm gonna rinse it out. Rinse, 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 rinse. Get my palette placed. I'm gonna mix a little of my brown and my blue. I'm gonna mix it quite dark at first. Really more to the brown even than the blue. It's almost grayed out. And I'm gonna come along here and I'm going to paint in, still keeping that directionality, Still keeping it. Still keeping track of it. Okay. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to come in and I'm going to get my white paint and I'm pull it right in there. I need it much more in the brown. I'm gonna even let it have a little browning streak to it. And then I'm gonna come right here and I'm gonna feather this, slightly lighter color. But I'm gonna let a little bit of that dark color right here peek out. I don't need to be in control over it. It just doesn't need to all be intense all the time. I'm gonna Pick this maybe up into this a little bit more along my little mountain range. Just a little bit more because I'm going to come back with some little highlighting in a minute. All right, now I'm going to really get into my white. Get right into my white. Right into that. I'll blend it. So how I'm getting this crisp edge that you see me getting here is I'm painting on the edge, the bottom edge of my brush. I'm painting on the bottom edge of my brush, letting the short bristles lead and the long bristles follow. That's how I get that crisp edge. If uh, you're good at eyeliner, if you've ever done eyeliner, you'll find that that, uh, that helps you out a lot. And uh, anymore, that's boys and girls. Sometimes you're good at eyeliner. So that might be a everybody tip these days which is okay it's completely okay this is art those in funny hats should not judge at all <laughs> we're just pulling this light color up into here because we want to lighten this sky up the sky is, is light and we want to lighten it so we've got it lightened up, right up into here. Just lighten it up. Yeah, letting it blend it out, lining it up. All right, and we really have it very light here, so we're gonna rinse this out. And we're almost done with this. We're just gonna put um, a couple little pops. Pops are fun. So one thing I might want, I might want a little bit of one of my purples along my mountain line. If a little bit of yellow gets in your purple, it grays it out a little bit in and pushes it back and makes it seem a little less along here because we're going to create kind of an atmospheric little effect along this mountain line. I'm just pushing that little bit of color in there. It's real fun to do. Right. I'm going to push some of that like up in here. 
And then you find a yummy bit of color and you go, oh, you go really nice right there. I should put some right there. What a yummy bit of color. I'm gonna get right into my, rinse my brush out. Get right into a little yellow here. I'm gonna come right along my little mountain side here. Pull that right up. Pull that right up. <sighs> All right, there you go. Now what you feel like you can do this, you're not alone in doing it. Remember what I said, I got Facebook. I'm everywhere, we got Etsy, we got Facebook. I'm reachable, I'm on Pinterest. You can run me down and you can ask me questions and you be painting your own stuff. I just want you guys to paint. I just guys want you guys to think about who you might do artistically, what you want to have going on in your lives. We're gonna add a little highlight right there. Strengthen up that little highlight. Strengthen up that little highlight coming down. All right, so we've got nice little a little bit of highlight coming along there. We're going to highlight up along here. A little bit more yellow. It's kind of fun stuff. Pull that up. I'm letting some of that pink peek through. There we go. Maybe a little more yellow. Okay. All right. That's fun to do. Okay, so then the last thing I'm going to do is create some zing. And how I'm going to get that zing is I'm going to do a little bit of my lizard crimson up and down along here, just in a couple places. It'll pull into the white. It'll blend out just a little bit. Whenever you have a little too much paint, you can always wipe it off. You can always just so, you know, that's just too much. And just wipe it off. We're gonna get put some here. We're putting some of this bright intensity. We're saturating a color so that it's dramatic. You know, it's okay to be dramatic. It's all right. Not e not every kind of drama is about like reality TV and negativity. Sometimes drama is just about being yourself turned up, and maybe that's a happy thing. Maybe that's just laughing more. Maybe that's just remembering to call your friends more often. We should all call our friends more often. Hi, friends. <laughs> No. Get real honest on your canvas. Like, I really like this red. It's just honest. That's a type of honesty. So we're gonna we're gonna pull a couple reds here too, because we've got this red, but we're gonna also we're gonna pull some of the cad red as well. So I'm gonna wipe this off and then I'm gonna get just the cad red over here. And I'm going to put this a couple places too. When you use these pure paint pigments, it's very dramatic. Very dramatic. So I like to go slowly and just think about it a little bit as I'm doing it. all just about sky. Look at and you step back and then you come in and you look at it. How's, how's that working out? How is that working out? I don't know. Sometimes I like to pull in members of the family 
Find out what the kids think. They'll tell you. They'll tell you. You know. Right about now, your right brain has a lot to say about all of this. It's a good idea to listen to it. I'm going to get back into the crimson again. Put some crimson back in there now where I see I feel like I need it. Having some fun. And then grab some cat and go, oh no, you need some cat right there. Ooh, my monkeys are being monkeys. All right. So that's a pretty dramatic sky that we've got going on. You know, any place you need to soften it. I see a couple places it could be softened. Grab some just of the uh, grayed out purple. Get a little bit of your purple that's been grayed out with a bit of the yellow. See that there, I gray it with a little bit of the yellow. Just soften it. Just go soften up, man. Lighten up. Don't be so serious. Don't be so intense. Just lighten up. Okay. Well, you know, I'm pretty happy with that. The sun is setting on this sky. It's an easy sky. It's a sky you can do. It's a sky you can do. It's a sky we can all do. This is really doable. I hope that you decide to be brave this week and try something new. I hope that you remember to say kind things to yourself and others. I want to see you getting creative. I want to see what you're doing. Please share it with me. I want you to join me at the Easel Roll soon. I'll keep posting content. You keep painting. See you soon. Bye-bye. A left, right, left to right. Still keeping that directionality. Left to right, left to right. A left, right, left to right, left to right, yeah, that was fun. left to right, oh, it's really fun. Still keeping that directionality.